through brothers and sisters in Christ. Firstly, I will greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's a joy to be gathered together in His presence this evening. Firstly, I give thanks to the Almighty God for sustaining each and every of our lives and granting us another opportunity to come together here once again to have fellowship with you. And secondly, I would like to take a moment to sincerely thank our President and Secretary for graciously giving me this opportunity and platform uh, to share my message with you all this evening. And also, I appreciate our worship team for leading us in uplifting worship. Your dedication to me and riches are gathering. May God bless you all and continue to use you all in the future days to come as well. Before we proceed any further, let us look to God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for sustaining each and every one of our lives and granting us another opportunity to come together here once again to have fellowship with you. Lord, you say thank you as I stand in front of your people to share your word. Lord, I speak it myself unto you. Lord, please use my mind, my tongue, my body, and everything. And Lord, please bless the message which I am to share among your people so that it will be a meaningful message to each and every one of us. And also, Lord, as we come together here this evening, we brought some amount of offering to you. Lord, please accept this offering and sanctify it so that it could be used for the extension of your kingdom. And Lord, I dedicate our offering, our time, and myself into your mighty hand with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. As I stand in front of you all this evening, I am filled with both gratitude and touch of sadness as this is not just a um, Sunday, serv Sunday evening sermon, um, but a very special moment for me as it marks my last time preaching here, standing in front of you all to share the word of God as a student of BDA as a BDA student. So this evening, I wish to reflect on the theme of faithfulness, uh, which is based on the scripture passage taken out from Psalms 119, verse 105. In the years that I have been part of this college community, we have shared countless of moments of growth, learning, and fellowship. From the early days of the orientation to the uh, late night study sessions to make exams and a lot of field gatherings, each moment, each moment holds a special place in my heart. And when I reflect back to, to this journey, I am reminded of the faithfulness of God that has guided us in every step of the way. But before we delve into the theme of faithfulness, I want to just share a personal testimony of God's faithfulness in my life. Being born and raised up in a devoted Christian family, from my childhood, I love reading the Bible and as we were staying in my childhood, as we were staying near the church, I followed my parents every morning to the church to pray. And on my childhood, I really admired those theologians who came for ministry at our church. And I, I used to dream of being one like them in the future days to come. But when I grow up, I have another dream as to say. <clears throat> Seeing my parents suffering or seeing my parents' condition, I don't want to depend on them anymore. So I was planning that after I finished that job, my job center, I would go aboard and start earning and so that one day I could bring my parents to live the last rest of life. I wanted to make them happy. That was my plan. But God's plan and my plan was the same. One day my mom was asking me whether I wanted to uh, enter in a seminary. But those times, thinking of the dreams that I have had before, I ignored her. But the second time, my mom and my dad asked me again whether I wanted to come in a seminary or not, telling me why they wanted to come here. And after, tell after hearing all the stories that my mom told me, after listening to the dreams that they have in me, I pray to God asking whether it is His calling. And during that time, I should say that God 
response to me using the verse Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you and all those days that verse God flew away from my mind and thinking and thinking about that verse I say that I accept that my mom and my dad's folly as God's folly. I say that God wanted to use me. And when I first arrived at this college, I was filled with both excitement and a bit of trepidation. I was excited because I thought that all the people here would be spiritual and one day in the future I would be one among them. I would become a very spiritual person. And it would be like uh, my fulfilling my childhood dream. And in the other way, I was again scared because if I got here as a British student, I would be the most junior and I would, I would be treated by, by my seniors. I don't want to experience all those um, reggings being pulled out late at night uh, while after we sleep just to get scolding. And sometimes, being pulled out at night, winter night, from 10 to 1 a.m., letting us stand outside a toilet which we call terrace. But on the winter night, we just a t-shirt and our half pant, standing with one leg up, only with one leg, and holding her, lifting up our hands. I was scared to experience all those again here. So having that thought in my mind, I came here. But when I came here, the, the bed that I have was totally the opposite. Uh, the seniors, they were so kind to me. Uh, when I first came here, I still remember I, the seniors were Sister Nina and Sister Nina. Especially Sister Nina, she was just like a second mom to me. She guided me spiritually, physically, everything. <clears throat> but after coming here and experiencing all those care and loving, I thought that coming into a seminary, life would be uh, so, uh, life would always run smoothly. But I was wrong again. I might do well in some uh, lines, academic or anything, but there are many times, countless times, I thought of giving up in my studies. There are many times I used to cry out to my crying, why do you choose me? Seeing myself, I'm nothing, I have nothing in me, and seeing my family, we are nothing. I used to talk to God, why do you choose me? Yet it was during this moment, those moments of uncertainty, that God's faithfulness becomes so undeniable. God was my constant companion, guiding me through challenges, providing me results in taking decisions, and surrounding me with a community of believers, which I call now my family. And as I look back on all those years, on all those challenging years, I am in awe of how God has been my anchor of faithfulness. He has been my life in times of darkness. My strength in moments of weakness and my source of hope when my path seems so unclear. His word became a lane for my feet, illuminating the way forward. So this evening, I choose the passage taken out from Psalms 109, verse 105. So if you have your Bible with you, please uh, turn with me to the chosen passage. Psalms 9, verse 105. This is where the psalmist declares, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my heart. May God bless each and every one of us through the living of His Holy Word. Throughout our lives here, it has been the word of God that has illuminated our path, providing us wisdom, comfort, and direction. Just as a lamp illuminates a dark path, even God's word. It shines light on our soul in 
What do we need to be faithful? What does we need to be faithful? This faithfulness, it is more than just being loyal or dependable. It encompasses a deep trust and commitment to God. When we are faithful, we remain true to our promises, our relationships, our beliefs, even when we are faced with uh, challenges. So in the context of the chosen passage, faithfulness, it involves allowing God's work to not only light our path, but also to direct our steps. As Christians, we are called to walk in faithfulness. We are called to be faithful in all aspects of our lives. It means that we are to align our lives with the teachings of the scriptures and trusting in God's promises. Just as a traveler relies on a lamp to navigate a dark path, we must also rely on God's word to navigate the challenges of life. Despite our best intentions, there are also many challenges to remain faithful, like distractions, temptations, and trials. It can be the light of God's word in our lives. But in the midst of these challenges, God's words remain a constant source of strength and guidance. This Psalms 119 verse 25, it not only speaks of the land and the light, but it also implies a destination. When we walk faithfully in God's word, we are ultimately led to Him. When we walk faithfully in God's word, we are ultimately led to Him. Throughout history, we find it, uh, inspired examples of faithfulness from the unwavering dedication of Ruth to her mother-in-law Naomi and the commitment of Daniel in his faith in the face of adversity. All these stories, it reminds us of the power of faithfulness. Even in our modern lives, we witness faithfulness in the entering marriage of our loved ones, in the dedication of the healthcare workers who tirelessly care for the sick, and even in our college, we see our teachers who tirelessly taught us, and in the unwavering support of our friends who stand by us to think and think. And living in a life of faithfulness, it brings numerous blessings. It fosters deep trust in our relationships, cultivates our integrity in our character, and also strengthen our spiritual resilience. When we are faithful, we become reliable pillars of support for people around us. So this evening, I would like to highlight three points where we are considered our faithfulness. Firstly, let us consider our faithfulness to God. First and foremost, we are called, we Christians, we are called to be faithful to God. He is the foundation, God is the foundation of our faith, the anchor of our souls, the source of our strength, and the light that guides our path. In a world filled with stiffing shacks and fleeing pleasures, our faithfulness to God must remain unwavering. It means we are to recognize His sovereignty over our lives, surrendering our will to Him, and walking in obedience in his, to His commandments. Faithfulness to God is not just attending uh, every Sunday uh, worship service or saying prayer before meals. It is a daily commitment to seek His face, to walk in His ways, and to live out His love in every aspect of our lives. So let us continue to seek God first in all we do. Let us trust Him in. Let us trust in His plans. And purposes for our lives and remain faithful in prayer and seeking his guidance and wisdom. And secondly, let us consider our faithfulness to our, ourselves. This, this is not about self-centeredness, but rather about honoring the unique creation God has made us to be. It involves being true to our values, our convictions, and the gift God has entrusted to us. In the midst of change, it is easy to lose sight of who we are. So let us remember our values, our beliefs, and the unique gifts and talents that God has given each of us. Let us stay true to ourselves and 
and calling God has placed on our lives. And then the third point, let us consider our faithfulness to others. Let us not forget the importance of relationships. Our faithfulness, it should also be extended to those around us, our family, our friends, our neighbors, our churchmen, and so on. In the world that often values self-interest, let us become, let us be beacons of love and compassion. Let us be faithful friends, a listening ear, and helping hands to those who are in need. It reflects the love of Christ signing through us. And for the fourth, let us consider our faithfulness to the journey of life. Life is, as we all know, it is a journey filled with ups and downs, twists and turns. Yet in every moment, God is faithful. His word is a lamp that guides us through the darkest valleys and a light illuminate the path ahead. Let us trust in His faithfulness as we navigate the unknowns of life. Having the courage to step into the unknown, trusting that God is with us in every step of the way. And before I conclude, I want to express my deepest gratitude to each one of you. Thank you for being part of my college journey, for your friendship, support, and encouragement. It has been an honor and a privilege to walk alongside you. And as we leave this channel this evening, let us be encouraged by the words of Psalms 119 verse 105 and carry with us the message of faithfulness. And as we journey through life, let us hold fast to the living of God's word, allowing it to guide our steps and illuminate our path. Let us, let us strive to walk in faithfulness, trusting in God's promises, and relying on His strength. And also to claim God as our anchor, remaining true to ourselves, extending love to others, and trusting God in the journey that He has laid out before us. And let us remember that everywhere we are, our faithfulness to God and each other unites us in spirit. And may the truth of the chosen passage in Psalms 1905 guide us as we continue our journey of faithfulness. Thank you and may God's blessings be upon you.